How are you? It's so good to sort of see. I don't think we've physically seen each other for such a long time because a lot of the time you were here, we're in lockdown, but um, it's so good to actually chat to you and, and check in. Yeah, I'm so glad we, we could hook this up and it's great to see you. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. I'm in the UK at the moment, um, right. but yeah, uh, traveling um, to a new place pretty much every second, third day. So it's um, it's been an adventure, a life of a, a nomad now. So yes, you are in the UK. We're joining your morning coffee, but just update us. You're saying that you're doing a new thing every day. Where are you? What are you on to this week? I know that you've got Extreme E coming up in at the end of August, but um, what are the movements in the world of Molly at the moment? Yeah, that's correct. So our next one is Extreme E. So on Tuesday, I will fly to Greenland from the UK. Um, and then after that, we have the next WRC round in Greece two weeks after that. Uh, two weeks after that, the next WRC round in Finland. And then two weeks after that, the next Extreme E round in Sardinia. So it's, um, yeah, it's been certainly an adventure and it's great. Um, you know, obviously, it's we, we're allowed to run these events and um, make everything happen and travel around a bit more than, than what we're allowed to do in Australia at the moment. But there's still you know, obviously a lot of um, COVID restrictions and testing and regulations. So it's... Um, Yes, it's quite a <laughs> it's quite a process to uh, to put all these things together. But yeah, just so grateful to be to be over here and doing it all. That sounds pretty cool. Do you need a PA? I'm I'm available. <laughs> yeah, what has it been like traveling with all these restrictions? And I'm, I know the testing would be would be pretty radical at all these events and leading into and coming out of. Yeah, certainly. So there's obviously each country has got their own restrictions and testing um, before you go when you arrive, and then when we go to the the events, we are essentially going into a bit of a, a bubble um for, for those events so it's um yeah it's been as you say it's, it's um it would be good to have a pa trying to work out you know, what what we need to do to get here there and everywhere um but you know the great thing is that we're we're finding a way to make it happen and we're back out racing which is is just awesome so i think everyone's just doing whatever we need to do to make sure that happens talk to us a little bit about let's go back to um extreme e i want to talk about wic as well but there's a bit of an interesting story because I know that you got an email. For everyone that doesn't know, she races for um, Rosberg Racing Team. And I know you got an email from Nico Rosberg at some stage and you were thinking, um, is someone having me on here? Can you take us through what that was like, getting contacted by someone like him to come and race for him? It was through my website. Um, I got an email one day that just basically said, hi, I'm Nico Rosberg. I want to talk to you about Extreme E. And I thought, oh, sure, you know, that someone's just having a laugh and they're you know, going to mm. be laughing at me for a while um, when I fall for this prank. But I didn't also want to not reply because I thought, you know, well, just maybe there's a 1% chance that it actually is Nico Rosberg, and I, but I didn't really imagine it was the case. But, uh, yeah, so I, I replied and then um, we arranged a call and then he, he called on, on FaceTime and, and yeah, it was, it was Nico. So um, it was pretty incredible and, and it went from there. So I think sitting that at home... Down at the time back in Melbourne um, when it all happened and yeah to be sort of sitting sitting stuck at home and then um, having having those sort of conversations and um, that that start to the planning to start from there was pretty surreal. So tell us a bit about that experience because um, in case you haven't been keeping up everyone there's been two rounds so far and uh, yeah Molly has won both so I mean something that you haven't driven before completely different for you. Um, a bit out of your comfort zone, well, not really out of your comfort zone, but a completely different machine, electric. Um, what, what's it been like for you so far? Obviously amazing, but how, how did you have to get used to that sort of car? Yeah, it's completely different in, in every way. We're driving these all-electric cars, which is awesome, uh, but they're big SUVs as well, so, you know, not far off two tonnes. Um, and then we're going to these, you know, remote locations all over the world. There's not really a track there where kind of, you know, driving in, in these in these areas um, that have been, you know, devastated by climate change and we're, and we're creating a course um, through there. So it, it's not really something like in a traditional race where you, you know what track you're going to, you can jump on the simulator and practice, you, you know kind of um, what's set up or, or have an idea of where you want to go with the car. We literally, you know, we arrive, we see the track the day before, no co-driver, we jump in and um, and go for it. So it's um, it's pretty wild, but it's very much you know, just adapting on the run and um, taking things as they come and, and trying to make the right decision at the right time. Would you say so far, so you're going back to WIC at the moment, you've got two rounds left, I believe. Um, would you say that this is, and it's a funny, it's ironic because we're in such a weird time in the world, but would you say this is one of your best years in your career ever? 
Yeah, I think so. I think Extreme e has really changed changed their career for a lot of drivers and a lot of females in particular as well. Um, having the opportunity to really step up into this international scene and and to be part of um, you know a, a pretty groundbreaking uh, form of motorsport and and what they're doing with with electric and sustainability and and these different formats and different locations. It's really writing a new script of how motorsport can be. So to be um, yeah overseas competing at such a high level to have three-time World Rallycross champion as your teammate, uh, Formula One World champion as your boss. I mean, there's so many things about it that are just, um, yeah, when you sit back and kind of think, you know, two years ago this series didn't even exist. So, um, yeah, it, it certainly changed, I think, the trajectory of my career and then being able to add the WRC events on top of it and, and yeah, hopefully some some more events back in Australia with Subaru as well. It's, um, it's pretty cool how it's all, all coming together. Unreal. We're so proud of you. We've been watching on. I've even been writing articles about you. So um, keep up the amazing work. What about <laughs> you in Australia next? What's planned? Well, hopefully I'll be back in October um, and we'll yeah do some some events in, in November. Um, that's that's the plan. Fingers crossed. But as you know, you know, everything, <laughs> everything's changing week to week. So, um, yeah, that's uh, another quarantine. I'm getting very good at these uh, 14 day hotel quarantines. So that's not the fun part. But, um, you know, if that's the, the price we pay to be able to do this, then that's fine. You are a quarantine queen. Sometimes I look, I feel like a lot of the time I look on the Instagram, you're in another hotel. At least, you know, a lot of the hotels around the world now. Um, we've got a question here. What's Nico like as a boss? Oh, he's, he's fantastic. I mean, I think the great thing about Nico is what you what you see in the interviews and what you see on the TV and in the media is exactly what he's like. He's, he's genuine, passionate about the sport, passionate about sustainability and also extremely talented and, and good at what he does and, and good at finding ways to, you know, extract more performance or, or approaching things from a different angle. So to have someone like that with all that experience at the very, very top level of motorsport to be able to learn from um, and in, in a way where, you know, he has so much time for you and very hands-on. So as a mentor, um, you know, it's a pretty amazing opportunity. I'm trying to be like a sponge and, and ask as many questions and then <clears throat> take that opportunity because it uh, doesn't come along very often. Do you ever think that you would be saying that Nico Rosberg is your mentor? That's pretty wild. <laughs> um, another thing I want to ask you, we've got lots of questions to get through. Thank you again to everyone that sent through some questions beforehand. But one um, from Chloe was, how did you get into this? So give me a sense of, I know that everyone knows um, your, your mum. Uh, Coral Taylor, very successful in rally. Um, is it four-time champion? What yes. yes. Um, so obviously you grew up around it, but tell us what your very first racing event was and did you always know that you were going to get into it? I didn't know I was going to get into it. I, I grew up around it, as you said, and, and my mum was competing, but it wasn't something that I necessarily thought I would do. I don't know why. I was just obsessed with horses and I wanted to go to the Olympics and ride horses. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but that's that's kind of what I was um, convinced of when I was growing up. And it wasn't until I was a bit older um, getting my license for the road that I went. My dad was actually running a rally school on the weekends at the time and he wanted myself and my sister to go to the rally school and just learn a bit of car control and, you know, be competent at driving a manual and all those, those skills just to help us be safe drivers. And um, that was my first experience behind the wheel of a rally car on dirt. And then I thought, Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> this is heaps of fun. And, and just started from there. And um, I was actually at boarding school at the time and, and the president of the local car club up there, Paul Kennedy, signed me out of boarding school for the weekend and lent me his old Honda Civic. And I did a little motocana um, on a skid pan up in Armadale and that was my that was my first event and it went from there. I didn't jump behind the wheel and have a could do it all straight away. It definitely was something that I was pretty average. <laughs> you know, just was trying to work out what was going on. Um, but I just absolutely loved it and I yeah. think that's a great motorsport. You know, it's it's a skill that you learn. So I, I could see that you know if I if I practiced and applied myself and worked out how to do it, I could figure out how to do it. Um, so I think it was just probably more my stubbornness. Um, and competitiveness that helped from there. We had a question from fellow girl on, Girls on Track ambas ambassador. Hello to Nadine. She wanted to know if one series in the world you could compete in, what would it be? Oh, I can see that question. And, and I think that's impossible to answer. Um, I don't think I can pick one. I'm quite liking this, doing a bit of WRC and a bit of Extreme E and a bit of Australian uh, Rally Championship. Um, so, I, I, honestly, I... Um, you know, the, the World Rally Championship's always been my dream growing up, um, but Extreme Media didn't exist then either. And 
Um, I'm just absolutely loving being part of that series. So um, one of each. <laughs> let's start talking about girls on track because it's something that we're both very passionate about, very close to our hearts. Um, Motorsport Australia do a fantastic job supporting it here in Australia, but of course it's all around the world. And it was started by Formula One development driver, Susie Wolf. Um, it's an amazing program to get young females involved basically in motorsport. And it's all about us getting in there, going to workshops, creating awareness. So what I wanted to know from you uh, is when and why and how you got involved in the program. It was a very easy decision to get involved. I mean, even Susie Wolf was, was helpful to me uh, when I was uh, overseas. You know, a very easy decision to want to be involved because I look at my career and my uh, introduction through the sport through my parents and, and watching my mum as a role model. Uh, and you don't really realise when you're young and growing up, you don't think of your parents necessarily in that way or think that they're doing anything different that's just the normal that you know so when my mum was you know, off for six months of the year rallying and and winning the Australian Rally Championship I didn't think that was necessarily a a unique thing um, <laughs> for a mum to do uh, and it wasn't until I got a bit older and and you realize you know how what an amazing person she is and what influence that had on me and my entry into the sport and my um, not not just my entry but also my perception of um, you know what opportunities there are for females in sport so I think now looking back at that, it was so influential for me um, and it would be great to be able to introduce more girls because I was so lucky to have that experience. And it's, that's, um, you know, I know that I'm, I'm one of few that, that was in that very lucky position. So I think it's great that this program can open the door and provide more opportunities and, and insight for young girls who are curious about it or might not even know much about it at all just to go and see what it's like because I'm sure there's so many girls that are having the same experience that I had when I first got behind the wheel of a rally car. You know, I grew up watching it but I didn't really understand how cool it was until I tried it for myself and then that changed everything. So if we can get more girls to have experiences, not not just from driving, but you know, even doing things like like all the incredible work you're doing, Emma, and um, you know the other ambassadors that we have, um, Romy and Jess, and from the team management and engineering and um, you know mechanics and and all that stuff, it's uh, just yeah, an incredible opportunity for for you guys to all come and just get a taste of the sport. And it, you might decide you don't like it, but I think what we're seeing is everybody realizes it's, it's pretty cool and why we're so passionate about it um, and and also then how they can continue to be involved for me one of one of the greatest feelings is coming away from one of those events and you know usually you walk in in the morning and the girls are sort of looking around and they're not really sure what they're going to be involved in but you know it's so broad what we do um, I know the media component is probably not their favorite getting them up in front of camera they probably want to drive more with you um, but you know at the end of the day I think they're so excited and, you know, they're always coming up to me and being like, I want to be a race car driver now. Or they're like, I want to be an engineer to Romy. And they say to me, I want to be on TV. And, you know, they wouldn't even go anywhere near the camera or the microphone in the morning. But I think it's that feeling of, you know, if you're just changing one, one girl's perception um, and creating that awareness, then you sort of know that you've, you've done the, the job right. And it, it makes you feel a little inspirational and, and hoping that they carry that on and they go home and they tell their parents about it and they look, um, further down the track into something like that. Yeah, for sure. And I think sometimes, you know, when you see it on TV, it, it, you don't know where to start or how would you get involved or what the pathway is. So, um, you know, it really is such a great environment and there's so many opportunities and so many people that want to welcome, you know, young girls, young boys, whoever that wants to be involved, um, but it's finding those pathways and how to do that. So I think this program can really help with that. And I mean, I think when we do the events, we get, more girls that leave the event wanting to be mechanics, which is just awesome because we have a little go-kart and you can practice by changes. And, and that's fantastic because we need more and it's, it's a lot of fun and it's a great skill. So I think it's really special. Absolutely. We've got a question here. What opportunities or advice would you give 20, 20 year olds who have just found their passion in motorsport, especially from a minority background? Great question. Thank you. Awesome to, to find your, your passion. I mean, that's the most important thing. You've got to find what you love to do and then, and then pursue it. And I think, um, probably the, the first place to start would be to find local car clubs in your area. Um, so Motorsport Australia have a comprehensive breakdown of every car club in the country. Uh, you can search which ones are near you uh, and then find and contact that club. Um, they hold events, uh, meetings, um, go along to an event, volunteer as an official, meet some people, see what's going on. You will guarantee to find a number of people who will help then 
you know, what's the best place to start. There's a lot of entry level competitions. You don't need a, you know, a really fancy car or a big budget to get started. So car clubs would be the first way. And then, you know, we've got all these resources online now as well and, and Instagram and, and get in touch with people, ask questions and um, yeah, just become part of our community. Great advice. And a hello to uh, Courtney as well. Fantastic program with great ambassadors. Well done, ladies. And yes, thank you to all of our ambassadors uh, that head all around Australia. And just a bit more on that, because I know obviously the time that we're in, in around the world, um, Melbourne event is coming up. Um, we're not 100% if it's going to be able to go ahead, but make sure you register anyway, because then we've got your details and we can send out any info. There's also... Um, a Brisbane event coming up. That's the 31st of August. So registrations are open for that. Now you'll get to go to Triple Eight Racing and meet Jess Dane. Hello to Jess. I'm sure you're on as well, fellow yep. ambassador. Um, <laughs> and that is just an amazing day out. Trust me, walking through that factory. Um, so make sure you head to uh, just send an email, girls on track at motorsport.org.au. Head to motorsport.org.au slash girls on track. The great thing about that event, I have to make mention of as well in Brisbane is that usually you have to go through your school but it's open to all women 8 to 18 so make sure you are you get in touch and register oh, online to get into behind the scenes of a factory like triple eight just want to say so that's an amazing opportunity so um yeah grab that and see what you know the the leading supercar um team is is up to hey molly have you ever had the opportunity to drive with your mum? Well, that's a great question if so whose competitive streak came through the strongest <laughs> um i definitely get a lot of my competitive streak from her i will probably i'm probably on par in competitiveness i would i would say i don't know if i've met anyone more competitive than her but i think i probably have learned a lot from her as well but she's co driven for me in, in a number of rallies actually we did a few rallies uh, even overseas um in the wrc together we did a test recently in tasmania um, where she jumped uh, jumped in the car and called the pace notes so i mean it's a pretty it's a pretty cool thing to be able to share with your mum you know tearing down a, a forest road and and your mum is just the coolest one in the car it's cool as cucumber yeah. no stress <laughs> big shout out to an absolute legend uh we've got a question as well from olivia mundy thank you for sending this through do you ever get scared when you're racing and how do you push through that fear i think you've got just no fear <laughs> uh, no I, I mean you definitely do i don't think anyone is immune from from that stuff I, it's not really i suppose you know fear of the speed or anything like that but it's it's you know you have the pressure to perform um and you know there's there's lots at stake and um there's lot, lots going on and you really are you know trying to find the limit of grip and, and not go over it and not make a mistake and um you know there is that that pressure and and when you do make a mistake coming coming back from that which happened to me very recently um in in our last wrc event so for sure it's there's that 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 anxiety and that that stress of, of the pressure and, and wanting to perform is is always there um so i think that's something that that is is quite um, a big part of our sport is, is learning how to deal with that and, and how to um, keep focused on your task. And I think that's the most important thing. It's, um, you know, whatever you do, there's going to be, you know, some anxiety or a bit of fear or, or pressure. And it's just about breaking that down and trying to focus on what, what the next thing you need to do is and putting all your energy into to executing that task. Um, and then, you know, what once that happens, then you get into the next thing and then you can start to concentrate on the job because, um, yeah, like, like anything, um, it, it can become overwhelming if you start to focus on what if or what if that happens and um, or, or the, the outside influences. So you just got to control what you can control and, and that's what you can do, the best you can do at the end of the day. Let's talk about um, TV for a little bit as well because you've switched roles in pit lane down TCR and also at Supercars recently doing an amazing job. If we're near each other on the microphone, all we do is crack up for about an hour or so. We don't get any work done. But um, how has that challenge been? Because, yeah, you're not the one that's getting interviewed anymore. You're the one that's interviewing people. Yeah, it's really hard. Um, and, I, you know, I knew it was going to be hard, but, man, you guys make it look so easy, and it's really not. I mean, you're live on TV, so the, you, know, you can't rehearse your line or practice or read a script. You've got to think of a question in the moment. Uh, you've got to... Uh, a microphone in your ear someone's talking to you during that telling you how many questions when you have to wrap up but you're trying to listen to what they're saying and you're trying to then respond to that and, and man it's like it's, it's a lot of fun it's a massive buzz and to be in that and see it from the other side um and in with all the action it's awesome but oh it's um yeah full full respect to you guys who make it look easy because i don't think i made it look easy <laughs> i think you could see just now 
<laughs> I did you forget really? it, but a lot of fun. You know what the trick is, Molly? I just pull my earpiece out. <laughs> They're talking too much on that, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just roll on my own. Um, we had another question as well come through earlier on uh, what do you think your greatest achievement is? I mean, there's a long, long list of them, but so far your greatest achievement. Gosh, I mean, it's something you don't really think about too much because you're always trying to focus on, on the next thing and, and I hope that it's still to come. Um, you know, winning the Australian Championship was was incredible uh, experience for, for me and the team and to be able to to achieve kind of a, a childhood dream, I suppose. But, you know, now for me, being an extreme driving for Nico Rosberg, Johan Christofferson, three-time World Rallycross champion as my teammate, um, yeah, you got to pinch yourself sometimes. So, you know, hopefully we can we can keep keep working hard in that series and, and achieve some some good things. That's that's my goal. Oh, congratulations! It's just been amazing watching you. Um, given that motorsport events are in Europe, especially in the UK, is it always necessary to relocate? Well, yeah, you're in um UK at the moment, but I guess you're just just travelling all around. But you know what? You just get a train over in Europe. <laughs> yeah, it's um it's tricky at the moment. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot of a lot of things up in the air all the time that are always changing. So it really, at the moment, um, because of, of the quarantine situation with, with COVID and travelling backwards and forwards to Australia, it's just it's a bit unfeasible to do it for every single event. Otherwise, I would spend more time in quarantine than, than out of quarantine. So it makes sense to be over here. But I think it's, you know, it's following the opportunity um, and, and really doing what you need to do. Uh, you know, there's there's always two sides of the coin. It's an amazing opportunity, but, you know, you have to leave home and your family and, and live in a suitcase for six months with, with no home, which isn't easy either. Um, but, you know, it's it's what, doing what you need to do for the for what you need to achieve. And I think that's the same thing with anything in life. You have to have to make sacrifices where you make sacrifices, but you're doing it because because you want to achieve something and that's that's worth it. So, um, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work, uh, but it's also what I'm passionate about, what I want to do. And, and I'm, you know, very lucky to be able to say that I'm, I'm living my dream. I, I see obviously working out a lot on Instagram, um, between the workout or the works, do you ever get some downtime or time off? <laughs> um, not, not a lot of out. I mean, it, it's very, you know, our sport is very, very go, go, go. And then stop. And you're always doing something traveling and it's all on. And then, you know, you go to nothing. And, um, so trying to keep some consistency, trying to keep a bit of routine. Well, say I try to keep a bit of routine. I try to do use my training as, as my bit of routine, uh, to keep a bit of, of sanity in my life. But, um, yeah, you've just got to go with the wind and do what you need to do and, and know that, you know, you're going to look back on this incredible journey and go like, yeah, wow. How, how cool is that? Um, there was a question from Scarlett just up above that I wanted to answer. Mm -hmm. A great, a great okay. question. Nerves um, and and sitting in the pits waiting waiting to start from um, karting, which I never did karting, so you're a step ahead, Scarlett. I'm very jealous. Kind of wish I did <laughs> coming back. Molly, I'm um, sure you that as well. <laughs> but it, it, it's a great question because I think a lot of times you think you, you want them to go away and you don't want the nerves. Um, you know, because it's not really always a particularly pleasant feeling to sit there and be nervous. But I think, you know, sort of, I suppose, through being nervous a lot, <laughs> um, you realise that, that that will always be there. It's not something that will ever go away. Um, and that is actually a good thing um, because you're nervous because it means a lot to you and you want to do a good job. If you weren't nervous, then I would say that's probably more a worrying sign. Um, so nerves are good. Um, and then it's about taking all that energy and all that nervousness and being able to use it to channel that energy into, all right, what do I need to do um, next? And focusing on, you know, leaving the pits, the race start, what, what the plan is, going through the process in your head of the start um, and, and keeping that, that energy and, and, you know, using it as a bit of fuel um, to, to go into to the next thing. And, and also breathing as well is really super important. If you're sitting in the car, sitting in the car, um, just deep breaths as well um just and then using that to to focus um it's easier said than done i say this and i try to do it and sometimes i stuff it up and do a terrible job of it uh but but that's what i try to do <laughs> and it does the, you know the more you practice it the easier it gets that's incredible do you have like a little regime for getting the car any superstitions or anything of the morning of or the night before Oh, I really, I really try not to because you know what it's like in most spots. Sometimes something will go wrong. You have to jump in the car, and, and I'm really, I'm more nervous of of being nervous about not ticking off all the boxes. Um, but yeah, I would probably you know like put um, my gloves on in a certain order or things like that. Um, for some reason, I always look at the 
the tag on my balaclava before I put it on. Like, you know, when you check it's the right way around, even though it's pretty obvious which is the right way around on a balaclava. I do that. Yeah. But, yeah, weird habits, I guess, but not necessarily superstitions. Um, we're going to wrap it up soon because, I mean, I can sit here and talk to you easily for three hours. <laughs> We get started, we don't stop, but I know you've got a very big day. We had just one final question come through. Um, we've already spoken about advice, but what about some of the traits that you think you need to be in this industry, whether it's, you know, my the, the media side or, you know, in racing? Yeah, I think, I mean, the first thing is having, like, a real passion for it because, you know, as you know, Emma, as everyone knows, it's it's a really tough sport and it's not, you know, it's not a – a job where you go to work at nine and you go home at five or, you know, you have a set, it's just, you know, everything's happening and it's long days and late nights, high pressure, um, hard work, changing all the time. You have to, to be able to adapt and, and um, you know, keep focused on, on the target. So that all helps when you are really passionate about the sport um, because you're doing it because you love it and you can always keep that perspective. So I think, you know, making sure you love it, surrounding yourself with good people, um, and then just, just keeping a, a positive attitude through, you know, all the ups and downs because, you know, motorsport has the, the highest highs and the most amazing feelings when it goes well. And when it goes badly, it's just the worst feeling. So you have, you have these, these extremes all the time. So, um, I think being, being around a good team, um, you know, keeping it fun, making sure you're enjoying it and yeah, keep perspective on, on why you're there and why you're doing it. And I guess once you stop enjoying it, then you've got to get out, right? Because that certainly shines through with with jobs that you're doing yeah totally and, and it's in those times where you know you've got the pressure or you were nervous about something it's just remembering why you're doing it um and, and having fun i always find when i'm when i'm enjoying myself i drive faster so um yeah that's uh, that's the key um lots of comments saying thank you thank you you're an inspiration to all women in motorsport you are indeed um what's on for today what's molly's day look like yeah, so I've uh, been been here behind the computer all morning. Um, I've had a, a bunch of interviews and, and team meetings. I've got a few more calls with our team um, coming up after this and a bit of uh, preparation ahead of uh, Greenland and then, um, yeah, visiting some friends and been, uh, been able to stay at so many people's houses over here. It's been so great just sort of going from people's house to people's house and <laughs> wherever someone will, will house me. So, um, yeah, go spend some time with well, enjoy your day and everyone just a reminder that, yeah, Brisbane reg registrations are open for that event for Girls on Track, motorsport.org.au slash Girls on Track. Keep up to date on the website. We have a really big back end of the calendar, fingers crossed, that that can all be done around Australia for workshops and we're really excited to soon announce what we've got planned for 2022 as well. But in the meantime, Molly, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. Thank you. And thank you again to Motorsport Australia and Burst and Auto Parts.